Hello and welcome to another vlog. This time it's about closing down plot 3, which is my borrowed plot. I've had it for 18 months and it's brought to you by the power of mime. <laughs> the microphone failed on me on the day, gave me some horrible feedback, and it's time to put it to bed. The crop you see in front of me is green manure, buckwheat, ready for cropping. We've got pumpkins in the middle and um, squash on the right hand side all to be harvested today the foliage has been decimated by powdery mildew but here's a little quick reminder of how the plot looked before I took it over tons of cooch grass bindweed well, through this section on the right hand side here was a mass of bindweed and behind me is a lot of bindweed very hard to do. Now that it's all been cleared by no dig with spot digging for the bindweed and the odd bit of cooch grass. So no, no dig does work but it needs constant maintenance as any garden does. Good squash harvest again. Probably as good as last year. Uh, this is again going back to when I planted up back in May. And this is what it looks like now. Yes, there are weeds in among it, but it's not too bad. Now, then, with the pumpkin bed, you can see on the on the right left hand side there. In April, I had a crop of green manure field beans. So it's worth noting that that provided the fertility it. Then that pumpkin bed had planting stations with bottomless, bottomless tubes filled with really good compost. The, the ground around it has been suppressed by cardboard and grass clippings. The bed on your left hand side, the squash bed, was planting stations with compost and that worked really well in the very dry summer we had up until Jill June, not to June then it was very wet of course and then it, the powdery building set in <coughs> um, it's also time to harvest the buckwheat that will be taken away for composting good bulky green addition um, I'm chopping it off at the stalks chop and drop type thing but taking the actual material away with me uh, I want to leave this bed in a better condition than when I found it. Well, obviously it is, but I want to leave it as good as possible. So I'm using the carpet that was already down the bed when I came. Uh, it's not wool carpet what I would normally use, but one of the things I've tried to say before is it isn't my plot, it isn't my rules, so I use what the owner wants to use. And this is what he uses. So, yeah. Don't uh, criticise me for that because I personally wouldn't use nylon carpet. So there we are. That's roughly finished. There's this bits left to do, like that pumpkin on the left hand side there. Now then, let's just focus on that end bed, the cabbage bed. Back in the spring, I mulched with leaves only. Now you can see the depth of the leaves that are remaining. Very good condition, and and actually I'm quite pleased with this. This bed is cabbages, newly planted. They will have to be hand watered. Uh, watered until established, then they'll be left to their own devices. Compost this end, leaves that end, six inches at least, of, nine inches probably, of leaves done earlier on in the year, much earlier in the year. We'll see how that goes. It, it's worth a try. It's following on from advice from Mark, I'm, I'm organic gardening. It suits his soil, it suits mine. So I let myself waffle on a bit there from the previous video, just to so give a bit of background. The crops that are going, go that are not finished yet by any means, they're, they're forming good heads. And that's just fed by leaves. And that's quite stunning. This is a mini variety of cabbage that you see interplanted. That's in line with the what they're supposed to do, not large heads. Until we move up to the the compost applied area um, again the heads aren't too bad 
but it's roughly the same as the leaves only. So the leaves only have performed very well. I'm gonna definitely pursue this again. Um, going across to my other plot just for comparison, this is a proper bed with compost applied and winter terrace, and again, it's really good. This is the five bed comparison bed that I did with dug area with compost applied on the end, no dig compost with cardboard there, field beans in the middle, uh, and then the next area that I'm going to see this one here was just a three year old wood chip to compare yields and the last area was winter terraced mulched with seaweed which worked really well and um, I was personally very pleased with this and I will definitely be doing that again now this is the bed now and I just want to show you the strawberry and weed growth of each zone the top one was the seaweed and winter terrace this is the wood chip area which is fairly good not bad weed, weed results from that at all this area was the uh, field beans area that was also not dug but nothing added to it covered in weeds so that obviously wasn't a winner <clears throat> the best zone of all was probably the no dig area that really was did have a, such a few amount of weeds is untrue and the strawberry growth is fairly good the dug area is a complete and utter mess it just got totally overtaken by weeds and it was a, f a factor when I was growing the crops as well. Now on another note, inside the greenhouse on this third plot that will also be handed back, this idea of putting the cardboard down and bottomless pots for the tomatoes to go into, it's worked an absolute treat. I'll just put down the automatic watering system has really worked well. As you see there it's nicely damp at root level um, there is constant pressure from the cooch grass that's underlaying this place but the but the cardboard has held it back if it was my plot I think I would try and do something about that by selective digging but of course it's always going to come in from the outside so you're always going to face this problem but the cooch grass uh, sorry but the cardboard has really kept it down that is definitely a success and in this part of the country we've still got toma green tomatoes ripping at a good harvest this week um, so I'm hoping that in mild Plymouth we might get away with a crop a little bit later on these tomatoes called Paulino massive success really tasty because I've been after um, a tomato that you can use as a salad tomato for a long time and always been dis quite disappointed with the taste but these Paulinos have been abundant in their fruiting and easy to manage and very very tasty you know in comparison to say something like Sun Gold some good is a little bit sweeter, but this is a slicing tomato to use in salads, and it really is good. It's just got the first indication of uh, a bit of blight, perhaps, in this one. So, we might not last after all. Yeah, there's, there's a few leaves here. But what I'll do is I'll come along and I'll chop individual leaves like that off, and individual branches like that off. Um, and that usually holds it at bay. Blight on tomatoes isn't necessarily the game over that it is on potatoes. Well, thank you very much for joining me. This is the plot as it's got to get handed over. Not in too bad a shape. A couple crops left to take out. The cabbages, the pumpkins. But basically now it's, it's ready to be handed over to the next tenant, which go back to the owner. In all, I think it's been a success. Thank you very much for joining me over the past 18 months. This one's now finished.